What is an impulse signal? What is your understanding about impulse signal? We have already learned that the pure impulse signals cannot be generated in laboratory. But what we can do is that we can create an impulse signal using small small pulses. So we can reduce the width of the pulses and we can approximate that is equal to an impulse signal. Now, what are some practical examples of impulse signals? For example, assume that you are walking through the corridor of the college. Suddenly your friend is coming and pushing you. So that was an unexpected moment for you. You have not expected that something like that will happen. So this is an example of an impulse. Now, how you respond to that situation? That is an example of impulse response. Now, if I am tapping on this desk, it is an example of an impulse. It is a sudden impulse, right? And how the desk is reacting to that? So it is producing sound, some heat also may be generated. So this is an example of the impulse response. So impulses can be considered as sudden shock, unexpected sudden shocks. So how the system react to this sudden shock is called impulse response. For example, COVID-19. We know that the COVID-19 affected different parts of the world in different way. Let us take the example of Indian economy. How the COVID-19 impacted the Indian economy? So COVID-19 was an unexpected shock, right? Nobody expected that. It was a sudden shock. So this is an example of an impulse signal and how the economy reacted to that, whether the economy was resistant or the economy perished or what happened to the economy. That was a response to the impulse. Otherwise, COVID-19, how it affected? What was the impact of COVID-19 in education? This is an example of what is an impulse and what is an impulse response. Now, what is the beauty of this impulse and impulse response is that this is one of the rude signal, very rude signal. It is, uh, you know that the definition of impulse is that the impulse signal is existing only at time t is equal to zero and its amplitude is infinite. So it's a very huge signal appearing for a very small time. So it is like a sudden electric shock. When we give such signals into the system, the behavior of the system will come outside. So we can, we can know what is the behavior of the system to sudden shocks. So this is one of the important concepts which is utilized for analyzing the signals and systems from time domain perspective. For example, if you want to know the true behavior of a person, what we can do? We can give him pressure, right? And if we put him in extreme pressure, all his behaviors will come out. So under extreme pressure, how a person works or how a person behaves, this gives almost all characteristics of that person. So this is an analogy, but using the same concept, we can give impulses to the systems and we can check what is the response of the system to that impulse. So this is known as impulse and impulse response pair. So there is an impulse signal, there is a system and there is an impulse response. There is another important thing. Since this impulse signal is a fundamental signal, we can approximate any signal using this impulse signals. You keep small small impulse signals one after another. So we can approximate any signal using these impulse signals. Now, if we know the response of one impulse from the system, then since it is a combination, we can simply add the responses of the system in the output to predict what is the output of the system for this complex input signal. So this is the beautiful idea which we are going to see in this video. In the first video, we are going to see how can we approximate a signal, a complex signal using impulses. So this approximation is known as staircase approximations and why the response of the system to the impulse is important. Okay, in this video, we are going to discuss about impulse and impulse responses. So these are two very important concepts, impulse and impulse response. What is an impulse and how a system responds to that impulse, which is known as the impulse response. Now, we know that instead of molding our houses, actually what we are doing is we are using small bricks and making our houses. Why are we doing like this? 
if you try to mold the houses or 3d print the houses we don't have that much flexibility in building the home since we are using small bricks small bricks we can make our houses in any form or any shape whatever curves or bends or whatever we want we can make it right here building the house is a big problem actually we are trying to approach that problem using small small bricks right this is a divide and conquer approach in which we will take a large problem and divide it into smaller problems so that our analysis and study become very easy so similar kind of approach we will adapt for signals and system also here we can see a signal x of t i am going to mark it in red color so this is our signal x of t so it is marked here x of t this is the time axis now the signal x of t is a complex signal for analysis because it is a signal which lasts for a long time okay now how can we make our solution very easier or make our analysis little bit easier is by dividing this problem into small small elements that is representing our signal representing our signal sec signal in terms of in terms of elementary signals elementary elementary signals for this purpose actually we are considering the impulse signal we are considering the impulse signal now why impulse signal is a very important which we have already explained in the introduction part why impulse is very very important right so we are approximating the signal x of t using small small pulses actually they, they are not perfect impulses actually they are small small pulses right so we can approximate our signal x of t using small small pulses like this so this is our approach right in this approach when delta t approaches zero when delta t goes to zero our pulses will become very closer and closer why we want to do that otherwise in our approximation you can see that there is an error actually this is not a perfect approximation if the width is delta t so there is an error but when delta t become very small that is delta t approaches zero our approximation become better and the error will be less right and this kind of approximation right what is the idea representing or approximating a signal in terms of elementary signal especially impulse signal this process is known as staircase approximation so this is a wonderful idea this makes our analysis very easier and efficient that is what we are going to see in this video now let us see an animation in this animation you can see that this blue color is a linear time invariant system linear time invariant system so when we apply an impulse you can see the pink color is the impulse at time t is equal to 0 when we apply this sudden impulse at t is equal to 0 you can see that a response is created in the output of the system see this yellow color is the output response since this response is due to the impulse it is known as impulse response right so this is known as impulse impulse response impulse response right so this is the impulse response animation in this animation we are trying to show how a linear system will behave to an input function so another system will behave in another way okay the output of another system will be different don't think that this yellow color output is same for all the linear system it is not like that for this particular linear time invariant system this is the output for some other system the output will be different so this is the basic idea of impulse and impulse response when we give an impulse to the linear system what kind of output it is producing that is known as impulse response now we can represent it like this we have an impulse del of t and the impulse response is represented using the letter h of t so when we give this del of t into an lti system when you give this del of t into an lti system it will produce an output which is known as h of t here one thing you have to notice that even though 
the impulse signal is a momentary signal or it is kind of a shock which is happening at time t is equal to zero sudden impulse even though it is a sudden impulse the response is not like that the response is lasting for a longer time response is like lasting for a longer time if somebody beat you it is like delta of t that is a sudden impulse but the pain will remain in your body for longer time right that is equal to impulse response that is the basic idea of impulse now why we want to study this we have represented our signal x of t in terms of in terms of in terms of del of t that means we are representing our signal x of t in terms of the impulse signal so many impulse signals together will represent our x of t that is our input signal now if that is the case since our system is an lti system that is linear time invariant system which obey both superposition principle and time invariance we can represent y of t y of t in terms of in terms of h of t so we can represent our output in terms of the impulse responses so this is the basic idea this is a basic idea fundamental idea of this video series right if you can represent a signal in terms of impulse you can represent the output in terms of impulse response so what is the key here if you know the h of t if you know the h of t of a system h of t of a system so what is my h of t of a system impulse response of a system we can predict y of t why because it is the linear combination of all the impulse responses you can just add all the impulse responses you will get y of t. so this is the basic idea which we are going to learn in this lesson i hope you got a clear idea about the importance of impulses in approximating the complex signals and how can we calculate the entire system response for the complex signal using the concept of impulse responses or addition of impulse responses.